Praise God. But I sure love this guy. I know you do. And he's meant a lot to me. I really got acquainted with him whenever. Uh, I don't think I'd ever heard him preach anywhere, but when I was pastoring at Huntington, I know who it was. Brother Thompson. Where is he? He went that way. He went that way. Well, that's, you'll have to wait till he gets back so you can go that way. <laughs> he told me whenever he walked up to me one time at church down there, and he said, Brother Stanridge, when are you going to have a revival? I said, I don't know who to get. He said, I'll tell you who to get. I said, tell me, man. I, I had a confidence in this world in Brother Thompson. And he said, if you can get Brother McNaughton to come and preach a revival, he'll stir up this, yeah. this church in this town. And I thought he said he's going to tear up this church in this town. <laughs> and I said, he's going to do what? Oh, he said, Brother Stan, do you know what I said? <laughs> he came and brought most of you people to our church down there whenever he came. <laughs> and they still talk about yeah. that yeah. little round man. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Till a bigger guy came in there one time, they just kind of faded out of their mind. Bless him. I love him with all of my heart. We all do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I've got so weak I can't even pick this up. You want me to move it back? No, ma'am. Still <laughs> behave. <laughs> I got it under control. Yeah. And I haven't got burglars sitting right here in the front. <laughs> Amen. He's under control. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Happy Mother's Day to every one of you. And it's a privilege to worship with people like these. And I know why Brother Matt carries such a heavy burden for this church. You're easy to love. And when you love somebody, you're really concerned about them. I mean, you are concerned about them. Amen. Now, as you can look at my Bible, and I'm not just showing you this, but you can tell it is used, especially on these pages right here. Mm -hmm. I was looking at the scripture that I'm going to read tonight, preach a sermon that I have never preached in 60 some odd years from this scripture and one over back in the Old Testament. I don't know how I overlooked this. I don't have a clue. But I did. God woke me up one night a couple of weeks ago about one o'clock. And this scripture was absolutely bubbling over in my heart. And I was crying and I was praising the Lord. And I knew I was going to keep on until I woke Sister Standridge up. So I said, well... I might well just go ahead. She's going to want to know what in the world's going on. So I woke her up. And I told her what God was talking to me about. We lay there and worshiped and praised God for an hour or so. And God has made this so real. I happened to mention it to the pastor. And he said, you're going to preach it. This coming Thursday night, which was last Thursday night. Circumstances beyond our control are his. We drove all night Wednesday night to get to Sykeston, Missouri. Got in there about 7 o'clock. Kind of tried to rest up, got a motel room and rested up. and Kind of got our lives put back together. Lost my first nephew. We only have two nieces. First one of my mother's dads that's going on to be with the Lord, first one of their grandchildren left this world mm -hmm. just like that. Unexpected. Said, 
told his wife, I'm going to lay down and I'm going to take a little nap. And I'm going to rest a little while. Mm -hmm. He said, he's been on dialysis. Mm -hmm. A little lady in the First Assembly of God Church in Sykeston, Missouri, weighed about 112 pounds. Terry Allen weighed awful close to 300 pounds. And he was on dialysis, and she came up to him. She said, I got your answer right here, Brother Terry. So I'm going to match you. I know I will. And Terry was getting in serious situation. They went to hospital in St. Louis, Barnes Hospital. Checked her. She matched. Perfect. They didn't even go home. They did the all of the surgery and everything while they were there. God. And that lasted him some five and a half to six years. Lord. He never would lose all of that weight. And the doctor told him, you can't use this forever mm -hmm. unless you lose a hundred pounds or more. You won't, that kidney won't last. And he told his daddy just a few Weeks ago, he said, Daddy, I'm going to get serious about losing this weight. But he waited a little too long. And I preached a message almost that way. People have put off God just a little bit too long. A little bit too long. I've heard Brother Mac preach his heart out here in this church. Amen. And I'm back so far in Pentecost, I heard some old-fashioned Pentecostal preachers that used to preach, hell so hot you'd hold your feet up off of the floor. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. Yes. And they made it surreal. And I've heard them preach it that I got scared. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I'm just a kid, meanest thing in the world. I didn't have a friend nowhere. My mom and daddy just hated to see me get off of the bus. <laughs> mean. I'm telling mean. Amen. But God can change yes. anything Amen. in the world that will come unto me, he said. Yes. Come to him. We've got church people that I'm scared to death that I have seen and pastored that if the catastrophe was to take them unexpectedly, what am I going to say? Did, oh, you can't preach them into hell. But, you know, it's, it's hard to find something to say that you can honestly Say this is the way they live and what's the check. This nephew of mine, he's about two months difference in the age of our oldest son. They were good friends. <laughs> Terry, I can all every time I was around him. Hello, Uncle John. Hello, <laughs> Uncle John. He'd always put the uncle on it. And I love this kid. I cried more to his funeral than his daddy did. I love this guy. And when my brother called me and told me he had died about an hour ago, he said, I thought my heart would break. But what hurts so bad, as brother preached his funeral, told about a lot of things about him, It said, we all believe. Now, this is all he said about this nephew going to heaven. He would have been a member of this pastor's church for several years. But what he said was, we all believe Terry went to heaven. And me and you, El, was talking about it. And I said, Bob, let me tell you something. I want him to have more to say about me going to heaven when I die. Amen. Then one little phrase mm -hmm. that we hope and we believe he went to heaven. Amen. 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 
I want people in the church to get so stirred up about going to heaven because I heard the other day on ABC, which is the last thing in the world that most of us want to listen to, but a Muslim had told them that in 2020 and 12, this year, was going to be the end of the world because of something that Muhammad had said would come to pass in 2020 and 12. They are propagating that the end is going to be this year. I heard John Hagee say, it could so well be coming of the Lord this year. And what, I, I, I don't mean to try to prejudge people, but what will keep you out of heaven? Let me ask you, what can you have in your life and that will keep you out of heaven? The Bible said that no sin will enter in. No sin. What is sin that we can allow to somewhere we'll put it in a pocket and carry it around? How, will it, how can it ever affect us and cause us to be lost? Let me tell you, this message tonight, I've got to get away from this, because whenever there's something that God is trying to do in a church, if there's any church in this whole area, it has to be this one. It has to be this church. If God's going to break out in a huge, monumentous revival in this town of Lufkin, it'll happen, I believe, in this church. Glory, glory, glory. I believe it in this church. Come on, amen. Because there's not another pastor that I know of, and I have been in nearly every church Pentecostal church in this area <coughs> that preaches like our pastor. Amen. Man, it gets me sometimes kind of worried. <laughs> he scares me occasionally. <laughs> Makes me want to dig in Amen. and get closer to God. Amen. Hey. Hey. We've been coming here, what, about three months? I'm about that's about right. Brother Wayne, you're yeah. young enough. Your man's good. What you, <laughs> I'll pay you later. Amen. Hallelujah. About three months, brother. I have been touched by the word of God being preached. Amen. In these three months. Amen. That I have in the last three years. Me too. Right. Hallelujah. Or longer. Hallelujah. That's how good this word is. Yeah. What is anointed of the Holy yeah. Ghost amen. makes a difference, does it? Yes, yeah. amen. amen. Hallelujah. Makes a difference. Yes. This is pretty close, but I'll, I'll, I can pick this up. I don't need your help. Okay. <laughs> amen. That's all right. I sang a song. Brother Thompson sang a song a while ago was written in 1949. I don't know why they got 26 in the songbook, but Mother and I, we were Johnny and Helen. Ira Stanfield was in a revival meeting, he and Little Butch, his little boy. Brother Lawson, one of the big shoots at Springfield and the Assemblies of God, his daughter, and Brother Iris Stanfield had married. They had this little boy, little Butch, the little cowboy. We had him there at our church. And he had little Butch to stand up in a chair. And they put the old microphone, it all go down so far. And they had little Butch singing in that revival every night. He'd get a request to sing, I want to be a cowboy, a Christian cowboy. And these little cowboy hat. And the way he sang, he brought the crowd mm -hmm. to their feet. Mm -hmm. Brother Ira Stanville, most all of his songs were written 
at a revival service. He would ask the congregation for titles of songs. And I sat there that night. There's a little grandma in our church. We all called. We were just, we weren't married then. And Granny Lyle, we called, the kids called her Granny. Because she just made over us like we were something special. Granny Lyle raised her hand, a big old bun, a white bun on the back of her head, looked like a uh, beehive. She said, I've been thinking about a song, Mansion Over the Hilltop. He said, all right, all right. She right, takes three titles from the congregation. He wrote that one down. I remember Sister Lucille Hornback requested another song. Brother Smith, who's gone on to be with the Lord, requested one. He wrote those three down. Brother Jackson came back and Brother Iris Stanford went over to the pulpit, I mean over to the piano. He plunked around a little while and Brother Jackson said, whenever you get ready, we're ready. He said, I've got my song picked out. And he came up there, and when he stood there, he said to that little gray-haired, precious mother, Sister Lyle, he said, honey, I've picked your song to write a, your title to write a song about. And the very first time his lips ever sang that song, Matching Over the Hilltop, Sister Andrich and I was sitting there. Lord. And we heard that song yeah. saying, yeah. Lord. 19 and 49. 19 and 49. I heard Brother Iris, uh, Brother, preaching somewhere on TV. And he mentioned that song. And he said it's been the most requested, most popular song. Of all of the hundreds that he had written, that was his number one song. And we got to sing it again tonight. Amen. And I want you to know I got a mansion. Amen. I want to, if Brother Mac preaches my funeral, if he's still here and we hadn't gone in the rapture, I want him to tell people he's got a mansion. Amen. Now, it's not maybe so, maybe think so, but I'm going to have a mansion yes, on that side yes. beyond all of the descriptions yes. of the mind of man. Hallelujah. I don't know. I've yeah. met somebody at Brother Mac's sermon from this morning, I guess. No, that hasn't been preached. Yet. Oh, it ain't been preached yet. Here, you need to hang on. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Happy Mother's Day again. This is a special day. Amen. 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 I had such a precious mother. I wouldn't be here if it hadn't been for her. You can't be as mean as I was and have such a good mother. I thought one day they didn't love me. They didn't ever, they wouldn't let me go to town on Saturday. When school was out, I'd drive the tractor all week long. Started driving that old Alice Chandler when I was eight year old. And we had to drive all week long, and we worked and worked and worked. Saturday come, we had an old Model A car. We went, oh, we thought, man, we're going to get up today, and we're going to Saxton. Dad and Mom say, no, y'all stay here. There ain't no use of you kids going to town today. But they had, Daddy messed up a couple of months before that. He bought him a nice pickup. <laughs> and he left that old Model A there at the house. He'd just drive it on bad weather days. Wouldn't drive his nearly new Dodge pickup. I went out there and tried to get my brother to help me get it started. He wouldn't do it. I was about nine, I guess, eight or nine. And he wouldn't help me. 
I had an old Alice Chandler tractor. I could start it. I could crank it if the battery wasn't. Daddy never would keep batteries on where it start, but it, we had to crank it until it broke my brother's arm, and then he got some batteries. And I pulled that old Model A by myself with that Alice Chandler tractor. I tied that steering wheel where it couldn't turn. I had to start it, put it in first gear, and the arc didn't have a chain, but I had an old drive shaft, and I took it out in Daddy's blacksmith shop and bent it over so where it hang over the bumper, got that thing started, jumped in that Model A, and started it up. And that's the day John Stanridge learned to drive. <laughs> Now, I thought the neighbors would appreciate in case emergency arose. They'd had a young boy around there that could drive somebody to the hospital or someplace. I didn't know we had so many big mouths in that community as we have. You got a lot of them sometime in church. As a matter of fact, we went to church with some of those big mouths. Dad didn't take a liking to the fact that he had a son wasn't over that tall and I'm an experienced driver. Amen. You know the old Model A's you can lay the back of that seat down and sit on it. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Amen. And I started it. No brakes. No brakes on it. All it had was three gears. When I left, it had three. I don't know whether there's any of them good when I got back or not. But I thought my daddy, did, when he got through with the seat of my britches, I know there wasn't no love in none of those licks he hit me. So the next time we went to church, I said to them, I'm going to walk home tonight. And I came home ahead of mom and dad. We had about half a quarter to go to the little Birch Corner Church. And I thought how funny it'd be for them to walk in and I had took my own life. The devil told me that's the grooviest thing you could ever do. I got that little 410 shotgun out. Stuck it in my mouth. I had a shell in it and a hammer back. And I never could pull that trigger. Thank God. God Thank would God. not let me do it. Thank the God. devil, I could hear him screaming in my ear. Come on. Get out of this life. Yeah. Get out of this life. Somehow or another, oh, I laid and went in that kitchen. I got a bottle of ketchup. <laughs> I came in that living room and I laid that shotgun down close to right to where I was at and I took that ketchup and put it all over my head and my face <laughs> and everything and I lay in that floor. I told you I was just Man. I was a disgrace. <laughs> I'm honest. And mama opened that door. <laughs> she we didn't have electricity, we had a kerosene lamp. That Mama struck a match and lit that, and she saw oh, Daddy. Here lays Johnny in the floor, and my mother screamed, "Daddy, I must have moved something. I don't know." But Daddy said, "Hold on a minute, Mother. Let me take a look." When he walked over there, run his hands through that ketchup, I knew then. I had bought the farm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What God will do for your life. Because right after that is the time God told me as an eight-year-old boy that the day would be in my life that I would see healings oh, like I had never seen in my life. Glory. Hallelujah. When I got well enough to go back and walk, 
Brother Hampton told me when I'm preaching a revival there at Bird's Corner, he said, there's somebody here tonight. I believe that God's given them a, a last call. This may be it. And I knew he might as well call my name. Why didn't you just tell everybody? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sitting there. Mm -hmm. yes. And whenever he bowed, they bowed, people bow their heads to pray. And he started giving an altar call. I was sitting in that seat right there that's empty. I usually sat way back. I don't know how I got up there that night. And whenever Sam McGarity was sitting right over here, he turned around and looked at me. I didn't know. He'd been fasting and praying, going to high school for the last two weeks. Save old Johnny. Save old Johnny. I beat his face off. With boxing gloves on. But he'd hug my neck and say, I still love you. <laughs> and I knew. I didn't know at that time he'd been fasting for praying for me. But I couldn't sit there no longer. 